this manga by Coben called Dragon Ball F. This is a what if story where Frieza has been on Earth since he was a baby instead of Goku. So let us start with this story and realize how many changes this story holds against the Dragon Ball story we all know and love. The first chapter starts with three attack balls flying towards the planet. On land, we have aerial control talking to a speaker asking to go and receive the soldiers that are arriving. Everyone runs to the spaceships that have already landed there. Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta descend. They are received by a soldier committee that informs the Saiyan Dai. The Emperor has already arrived and it is now on Sector 4 of the planet and that they can go and report on their arrival themselves if they prefer. The Saiyan trio starts walking towards there while Nappa bo- for conquering as many planets as they have. The scene changes. We see a surprise Raditz saying that they just arrived and at least deserve a day of rest before going back out again. Zarboss answers back that the Emperor wants to expand his empire even more, that the little soldiers like him should not even question, but obey. Then Raditz is told that he should be by his other teammates, and we see both Nappa and Vegeta kneeling with fear against the Emperor, Zarbon and Dodoria. Dodoria mocks the Saiyans, which makes Nappa very enraged, and suddenly the Saiyan hits Dodoria, sending him flying. Dodoria is about to come back to the Saiyan when a sudden hand gesture cuts his arm. Everyone is terrified, when the Emperor himself turns around and after cutting off Dodoria's arm, ends up erasing him with the Key Blast, destroying everything around, leaving a huge crater and a huge dust cloud. The Emperor is thrilled by the new beautiful landscape, and we are revealed that the Emperor is none other than Kakarot. Zarbon then tells the Emperor that maybe it was a mistake to kill Dodoria and the Saiyans with the explosion since they were good assets to conquer planets. Kakarot agrees and apologizes since his battle urges have made him lose himself several times. The Emperor ends up closing their talk by sharing a secret. Since he has been on the head of the Empire with full of weak soldiers, he has not felt threatened by any obstacle in front of him. But he is sure that somewhere, someone is out there. A worthy opponent will appear one day. And that is the actual reason why he wants to expand his Empire so energetically. The scene changes and we are revealed that the three Saiyans escaped with their spaceships and the three agreed that the best fort now would be to hide in a faraway planet as they fly to the darkness of space. On Earth we have Krillin and Yamcha training their reflexes like what Gohan used to do with Goten when they suddenly notice someone watching them. It's Frieza, dressed with the turtle Skulgi. The two Earthlings are so happy to see their friend once again after a long time. Frieza tells them that it was something important to talk to them about. We see a flashback of Frieza talking with Master Roshi about him not training again, and how it is useless since either way his power keeps increasing every day. The Turtle Hermit tells Frieza that you should train to better yourself and to surpass the current you every time. Frieza tells him that he is simply not motivated. He wishes that there was a worthy opponent out there. He questions, what would stop him from destroying the world if he ever gets bored? With a sad smile, Master Roshi leaves. We are back with Yamcha, Frieza, and Krillin, where Frieza tells his friends that for years he has dealt with the dark thoughts inside of him, but that recently he has started to get tired of fighting them. Surprised by hearing this, Yamcha and Krillin assure Frieza that they will help him find a solution. Up from there, Kami-sama is worried something bad will soon happen to the Earth, while the three Saiyan spaceships arrive on the planet, ending chapter 1. This chapter starts off with the Pilaf gang finding their 6th Dragon Ball and in search for the 7th. Pilaf is sure that when he finally gets all the Dragon Balls, the world will kneel before him as the new master. The scene changes, and we see Piccolo training to surpass Frieza in order to kill him. Frustrated, he admits that no matter what he does, the gap between them is too big, that he will never reach that level of power. Suddenly a sensu bean drops at Piccolo's side. He is surprised to see that Frieza has come there. He tells the Namekian to eat the sensu bean, recover his energy. Then they start a weird series of talking topics that, up in Kami's lookout, Mr. Popo wonders, why are they talking about this nonsense? When a worried Kami tells him that they know they're being listened to and that their real talking points is by telepathy, Kami is worried about what sort of talk they could be having that they need to hide it. When suddenly something comes flying down, a huge key blast is felt by Kami, Piccolo, and Frieza who rushes to find that source of energy and followed by Piccolo who calls Frieza a despicable person. From the place where the spaceships landed, the three Saiyans emerge. They wonder where they ended up with Raditz saying, it's probably here. The trio decides to search for food since they're finally free. 
Ending chapter two. Chapter three. The Saiyans landed near a place where a family lived. A man from that family went to try and help them. He told the Saiyans that if they need food or anything, he can help. But without a warning, Raditz shot a beam from his mouth. It appears that the human is about to die. When a hand appears from behind, stopping the blast. It's Frieza, who stopped the attack without even flinching. Piccolo arrives as well and tells the humans to run away from there. When Vegeta sees Frieza, he gets a sudden shock. He recognizes him and starts having a flashback. A damaged Vegeta is running through buildings trying to escape from a planet. When he suddenly witnesses a small pod, he rushes there to find a baby Frieza? Vegeta is happy to find that pod to escape since the planet is about to explode in a million pieces. And just before he tries grabbing baby Frieza, he wakes up. With a big scream, a huge burst of key is released and Vegeta is sent flying unconscious. Back in the present, Vegeta says that he must be the baby from that time. The three Saiyans realize that they can feel the power of Piccolo who is around 800 units, but they can't read Frieza's power. Vegeta decides that if the scouter is not working, they'll find out Frieza's power the old fashioned way and rushes toward the Earth duo. With the single tail swing, Vegeta is sent flying towards the mountain, crashing heavily. Vegeta tells Piccolo to handle the other two Saiyans. Since Vegeta is the strongest of the three, he can handle him himself. From the remains of the mountain, an angry Vegeta emerges and charges to Frieza, who lets himself be taken away in order to split the Saiyan. He and Vegeta fly into the horizon while Piccolo asks the other two Saiyans to move to a desert area to continue their fight. As chapter 3 ends. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the beginning of a story where Frieza is sent to Earth and Kakarot is the emperor of the universe. This story will continue, and if you like it, we'll bring you more reviews of the chapters. So, if you don't mind, tell us what you think of the story down below. And don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and it's been Adrian Anonymous. It's been real. Catch you guys later.